Welcome to this episode of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Today we have a verdict in the case of the Gypsy Jokers out on the West Coast. It is a two for one. You'll learn about that one. Also, a motorcycle club is offering a reward in a killing you'll see that as well as some as uh good stuff's coming up as well as we always do in the beginning and then of course the wall of shame you won't be surprised by this one Sad state of affairs, indeed. With some stories coming up, but first, man, let's go to some good stuff. Independent mail. Thousands of bikers bring toys to Upstate, an annual Motorcycle Anderson Toy Parade. Doesn't fit the narrative for these police officers, does it? Of course, they'll go back to the media and try to downgrade it but we won't we know different don't we nearly 40 minutes an unbroken chain of motorcycles rode past the anderson mall each carrying toys for kids 40 minutes that's huge you know how big of a line that is uh, they end up helping at least 350 families each year and many of the families have several children little man of the Confederates Motorcycle Club. Hell yeah! I'm surprised they even printed this. Now, Confederates Motorcycle Club. Yeah, wow. That's just... Wow, they printed that. Uh, the parade was launched 41 years ago by Fag and a member or and a former independent male sports writer, Jack Hurley. And no, I didn't. That's the name, guys, okay? Uh, toy parades are fairly common and always worthwhile since they help children, said Jimmy Highhouse, who lives in Lyman. But the Anderson one is one to make every year since it is so big that it stands out. High House and his wife Angela wrestled large white stuff from the netting on the back of their motorcycle after parking following their ride in the parade. The rest of the parade was still rumbling behind them. This is cool stuff, man. It, it, it really is cool. And I know that the parades are common. The Toys for Tots and raising funds for Toys for Tots. But it really does go to a good cause. And that is getting these kids some toys for Christmas. It must be such a hard time for these kids during this time when they look around. They see other kids getting a lot of stuff. And their families are struggling. So good stuff, man. You know, like great stuff. Uh, anyway, this story we got, I was talking about Motorcycle Club adds cash to reward fund to find Chairman's Killer. You heard that, right, Leo? <laughs> and don't forget, uh, starting December 10th, we will be having the new series on Fridays, The Wall of Shame in Detail. He loses a loved one to the city's record-breaking number of homicides this year, and now they're speaking out about the deadly violence. A loving father and grandfather gunned down while he was helping a woman to her car on Memorial Day. Yeah, tonight Steve Levine shows us what friends and family are doing to get that killer behind bars. More than six months after the leader of this motorcycle club was gunned down right in front of the building that founded, posters like this now being put up in the American Edition neighborhood to get justice for the family. As members of this group now beef up the reward to catch this killer. His loving, caring, you know, even when he was dog tired. For the first time since his murder 
Jordan. Jordan's three children gather at the spot where he lost his life to gun violence. We deserve to know who did this. Sad state the of loving affairs. father and grandfather known as Bobby was shot and killed May 31st, helping a woman to her car after an event at the Flames Motorcycle Club, an organization his family founded decades ago. How difficult is it to come back here? It's, it's very difficult, you know, coming back knowing that he's not going to be here or he's not going to walk through those doors. Jordan was the chairman of the Flames organization when he was murdered. He was shot to death and a woman he was escorting to her car wounded in this parking lot shortly after the club closed. We have not gotten enough information to determine exactly who the target of this was. Uh, I don't believe it to be random. Members of the motorcycle club now doing their part, adding to a reward fund to bring justice to this grieving family. I think it's great. Um, I actually, that just shows how much they loved him and our family. Investigators say they have few leads and are now reviewing surveillance video, hoping to discover witnesses. Do you think you'll be able to solve this case? Sad state of affairs right there. Uh, so the Flames Motorcycle Club is adding to that cash reward for more information. Now, out west coast, here we go. The Gypsy Jokers Motorcycle Club Racketeering Conspiracy Trial. This is a prelude to the verdicts that we got. Basically, they're doing an expose on the Gypsy Jokers Clubhouse. It's just a normal looking clubhouse like anywhere else, but what the media does is what the media does. It gets all butthurt as you go along in these pictures because there's SS bolts, uh, white supremacies heard within this thing. Here was the uh, accused right there. And again, there is verdicts that were handed down this thing lasted like five weeks or something it was a big one uh the pdx president was mark uh Declo. kenneth hoss was the whiz i believe he was their national uh chad erickson was just a regular member uh then they go into a little bit about what the case was about but as you can see i like the motorcycle now that's badass man come on that's badass. They show the club's uh, thing. Then uh, they show a picture of somebody who was put out. There's a big X on their back. And I got to curate, if you will, because I'm on the podcast platform, too. Uh, so it's basics on this. You can go through, look at the clubhouse. Links in the description box. There, there's what they were complaining. The SS crap. Anyway, it ends. Uh, the Portland president was found guilty on all counts in the racketeering trial, but the national president was acquitted, which is, you know, good news, man, because it's real hard to beat a RICO trial, especially when they got a, like a 98% freaking conviction rate. It's crazy. Uh, again, that was Kenneth Earl House, or Haas, known as the Wiz. Uh, he was good enough, freaking not guilty. But Leroy, Mark Leroy, he was found guilty uh, of murder, conspiracy, kidnapping, and aid of racketeering for the torture killing of an ex-member. So they got two to one right there. Two to one. Can't beat that, man. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, for those that do not know what the wall of shame is, that is when we highlight police officers who themselves have been arrested for crimes they're always saying that motorcycle club members do. And why do we do that? Because this self-righteous crap 
that they do no wrong has to be exposed. And that's one of the big things that we're going to be doing on that series. Here we go. As let a police officer arrested for guess what, guys and gals? Yes, raping a woman. He arrested for DU or DWI. New Mexico police officers behind bars accused of raping a drunk driving suspect while taking her to jail. The alleged victim says she felt she had no choice, fearing he would add charges or worse. Leon Martin, 22, was arrested uh, Tuesday by New uh, Mexico State Police. They say Martin, who worked for the police department, admitted to much of what happened. The woman reported the assault last week at a hospital saying she was arrested for DWI by him. On the way to jail, she says Martin pulled his patrol car over into a dark area and asked her to come to the driver's seat. She says she he took off his vest and gun belt and then raped her. Angel Charlie, executive director of the Coalition to Stop Violence Against Native Women, says while it's frustrating someone sworn to protect their communities abuse that power it's not uncommon very good words right there frustrating someone who is sworn to protect their community quote rape is fundamentally about an abuse of power that's essentially what we are seeing here unfortunately we do know that this is common isn't it isn't it isn't it check out the rest of the story on this really man i am happy uh for the national president of the gypsy jokers motorcycle club for beating that rico charge man the 98 percent conviction rate i believe in my personal opinion, is because those that are charged with the RICO, they don't have the resources to fight the charges. Most of the time, you'll probably get a public pretender or something like that. Or if you do and are able to get a good attorney, them legal fees start adding up where it's almost impossible to find your way out. The government has unlimited resources to convict you. That's why I think they have a 98% conviction rate. And what they do is use that conviction rate to bastardize MCs, bikers, hell, a lot of other organizations. They use the summations of those that are forced to plead guilty in order to get a deal. That's how the DOJ and all them are able to blanket statement that these type of clubs are criminal organizations. Sad state of affairs. But there is ways of fighting back. That's expose them expose them and expose them yeah you know that last uh, live episode i got some uh angry little piggies but can you actually say i'm wrong there's actually proof of how bad it really is with cops getting arrested that one site we're using shows it all you hear it every day and I am still like, damn, man, what's up with all the sex crimes? It's like, do you guys get any? Was I right in saying maybe your wives don't think you're men or something like that? Because you guys are really in the news for all this sexual stuff all the time. You're a little freaky, man. A little freaky. That's concerning. It really is. It's like, damn, man, go pay a hooker instead of raping somebody insanity insanity 
Anyway, we're going to go over to the second half of the show. You can listen to it on all the major podcasts and platforms. It's a good winter schedule, man. A lot of deep thoughts, a lot of uh, different subjects that we're going over. So get on over there. I'm going live on the morning hoot right now with China Dow. We'll, you know, we'll have some fun bashing on her. Talk to you later. Rock on. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.